In this video, we're going to take a look at the final JWT lab on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called JWT Authentication Bypass via Algorithm Confusion with No Exposed Key. I just want to remind you that we did a full series on these JWT attacks, so if you're not sure what JWTs are or how the attacks work in general, I'd recommend going back to the start of the series where we did an introductory video and then went through the beginner and intermediate labs. Also, the last video we did was the first expert lab, and we covered some background information on algorithm confusion attacks. So I'm not going to go through all of that again. If you're not sure what these kind of attacks are, I recommend you go back to the previous video. That being said, let me just give a very quick summary that algorithm confusion attacks essentially occur when an attacker is able to force the server to verify the signature of a JWT using a different algorithm as intended. This might enable attackers to forge valid JWTs containing arbitrary values without needing to know the server's secret signing key. In the last video, we were able to download the server's public key, convert it to a suitable format, modify the payload to admin and change the algorithm to HS256, the symmetric algorithm, and then sign it with the public key. Since we changed it to the symmetric algorithm, the server uses the same public key that we signed it with to verify the signature. So the attack in the last lab was possible because we were able to download the public key from the server. But in cases where the public key isn't readily available, you might still be able to test for algorithm confusion by deriving the key from a pair of existing JWTs. This process is relatively simple using tools like jwtforgery.py, and you can find this along with several other useful scripts on the RSA signed to N GitHub repository. Wartswig will also create a simplified version of the tool which you can run in a single command using this Docker command that we have on screen. So this uses the JWTs that you provide to calculate one or more potential values of n. We don't need to worry too much about what this means. All we need to know is that only one of these matches the value of n used by the server's key. For each potential value, the script will output a base64 encoded PEM key in both x.509 and pkcs1 format, and a forged JWT signed using each of these keys. We can identify the correct key by using burps repeater, to send a request containing each of the four JWTs. Only one of them will be accepted by the server, and then we can use the matching key to construct an algorithm confusion attack. So with the background information out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, this lab uses a JWT-based mechanism for handling sessions. It uses a robust RSA key pair to sign and verify tokens. However, due to implementation flaws, this mechanism is vulnerable to algorithm confusion attacks. To solve the lab, First, obtain the server's public key. Use this key to sign a modified session token that gives you access to the admin panel, and then delete the user Carlos. And again, we are given the usual credentials to log in with, so let's just go and open up the lab. As usual, we'll go and log into the account. We'll need to do this twice this time because we want to get two different JWTs. So I'm going to enter Wiener and Peter, and that's going to get us our first JWT. So actually, what I'll do is we'll run this command as well. I'm going to take a copy of this. You could just go and download that JWT forgery script, but I'm going to use the Docker image that's provided by Portswigger. And it tells us that we can just run this and provide the two tokens. So let me copy that first one again. And we'll paste that in here. And then we need to get a new one. So I'm just going to delete this one. And then let's refresh the page. It'll force us to log in again. And then we'll have our second JWT. Take a copy of that and let's go and try it out. If it's not able to find the image, it'll take a little while downloading and building it. But once you've done this once, you'll be able to just very quickly run this command again in future. OK, so that took a minute or two to run. And you can see that we've got two different JWTs. There's our first one. And there's a second one. We're going to want to go and test both of these. And then depending on which one works, we'll know which key to use. Is it the one at the top or is it the one at the bottom? So let me go back here. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to open up a new tab to the home and I'm going to go and send that to the repeater. In fact, let's go to the repeater and let's maximize this. Let me change this to admin and click send. And it says we're unauthorized. So we need to be the admin in order to access this page. So let's go back and let's see which one of these tokens works. I'll take the first one and I'm just going to replace the token here and then refresh the page. And you can see we're still logged in. So it looks like it's that one, but let's try the second one anyway. We replace the cookie, refresh the page, and we're logged out. So that second one's definitely invalid. 
and we need to use the first key. And essentially we can take a copy of this, make sure you've got the whole base64 encoded key. We can go to Burp Suite, and we've used this JWT editor before in the last video. Basically we're gonna do the same thing, generate a symmetric key, we're gonna update the K to be that new certificate that we just created, or that was just given to us. And then we're gonna to go to our repeater, and we're currently trying to get to admin. Let's go and modify the token. So we want to change this to administrator. And we want to make sure that algorithm is HS256 because again, we're forcing this to use a symmetric algorithm. So they'll be using the same key to sign and verify. And then we're going to go to JSON web token and we're going to sign it. And we've only got one key to sign it with. So we don't want to update the header. So have that set to don't modify. Click OK, send and we're still unauthorized. Oh, I realized I just changed the wrong value. I changed the ISS, which I can't remember what it was to begin with. So let's go back here. Let me go back to JSON web token. Can I undo this? Yeah, there we go. All right, undo. And let's update the correct value this time. So it's administrator. And go here again and just sign it. Oh, this one hasn't updated. Okay, let me send that. Oh, did I just change that to administrator? I'm sure I did. Okay, one more time. And that's gonna fail because it's not a valid signature. Let's go here, let's sign it and okay. Submit, 200 okay, so that's looking good. Now we can delete the Carlos user. So we could go and use this in the browser or we can just take a copy of this here, go back to our raw tab and then we'll just send that. And it should come back and say, we have successfully completed the lab. There we go. So that's it. We have completed all of the JWT labs on Portswigger. Hopefully there'll be some more in future. And if so, I'll update this series. If you find any other cool JWT vulnerabilities, either from a capture the flag or from a bug bounty program or something, let us know in the comments. And finally, just to plug the integrity bug bounty platform, if you're interested in finding vulnerabilities with JSON web tokens, this is a good place to look and you can get some money for it in the process. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks.